Find product links below and hundreds more videos on my channel. Hey everyone, welcome back. So this is the S40 stabilizer and I wanted to show you this because I've had tons of questions about this. I had to just buy one and review it. And so um, it's sort of a mixed bag. Like it's really cheap and you can get shots with this. You know, it's not it's not something, not something I would use for work. Like if you're being paid to do it, spend more money on something professional. But if you wanna just like get a, a few shots, a few moving shots, if you're only planning to like move slowly and not run, I don't think you could run with this, I really don't, um, then you might, you know, this might be an okay thing. It's really cheap. Uh, personally, I would spend a little more. I mean, even something like Glidecam XR series, I think are quite cheap. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a few various cheap ones out there, um, you know. So, so personally, I would spend more, but this is really, really cheap. It's, it's like uh, 60 pounds or something. It's like a hundred dollars. So um, very cheap. Now, I did post a, I did, well, I filmed the full review and post it and uh, I, I was being really critical and I figured, you know, I can't be this critical about it. It's just a really cheap product. And uh, honestly, I just figured it'd be most, most fair to just show you footage and let you decide for yourself. You know what you think about this. If you think it's fair for the price, then you can buy it. Um, build quality isn't good in some places. Uh, the gimbal, for example, not good. It's it's one key. It's got a lot of friction. Uh, I fixed the friction mostly by uh, unscrewing these, which are too tight, and you're gonna need a special tool for that. I'll post a link below. I have no idea how much they cost. I did it with some needle nose pliers, but it was really difficult. So you're gonna wanna buy the special tool that you get for this. And um, and then I added some oil in there, and that, you know, that uh, helped quite a lot. Um, the, the, now it's quite free moving. And um, this thing here broke um, just with, uh, this is the connection piece between the bottom half and the top half uh, of, of the pole. And so the weight of the camera just made the plastic break, just like butter, it just broke, like went whoop and broke. So um, I just holding it together with tape here right now. And, and I will just be, I think I'll just be returning this because it's obviously it's, um, it's broken, there's not, much I can do with it. But if you're careful with it, and if you don't extend the pole all the way, then it shouldn't break, right? So uh, it broke because I extended the pole all the way. And uh, so just don't extend the pole all the way, I guess. Um, and, and I guess use lightweight cameras or, or something. I don't know. Um, so this is the Glide, the, the, sorry, this is the NEX6 and uh, the 16 to 50 kit lens. Uh, please excuse the fact that I'm doing this indoors but I don't, just don't have time to like go outside and do like a full big thing about this. Uh, I just have to post this pretty quick. Um, now, uh, you have to use both hands with this. If you try to use one hand, it's not gonna do, it's not gonna do it, right? So um, it's bottom heavy right now. The reason it's bottom heavy is because you have a very inaccurate gimbal here. If you tried to balance this properly, it would go nuts, it wouldn't fly at all. So uh, you have to balance it bottom heavy and then just use your other hand to help control this. And um, so it's, it's not too bottom heavy, just a little, uh, what I figured would be a good, uh, a good amount for this. And um, as you can see, you know, it is helping stability, but is it helping enough that, to be worth its price? And how does this exact same setup look in comparison uh, to just handheld, this camera handheld, and in comparison to something like a shoulder rig at the same sort of price range or less? So I'm gonna show you that as well. Uh, because I think that's really a deciding factor here is, you know, do you spend your hundred dollars on this or do you spend your hundred dollars on a shoulder egg or whatever? So, um, I can get shots with this, but you have to remember this is a wide angle lens. You have to remember that, uh, I am experienced with these things. I have a very steady hand and, um, yeah. And you know, it's, it's wide angle lens, but the image stabilization is turned off. But, you know, if I had to use this, I guess, you know, it would, it would be helpful to some degree, but, you know, um, yeah, it's sort of hard to say whether this is good or bad because it's, it's cheap and, and it's, and it's somewhat usable, you know, so it's kind of, it's hard to tell, but basically, um, it's, it's hard for me to put a conclusion onto this, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to just say it's 
bad because it's it's only bad in comparison to the expensive stuff that I have. Um, now, if you if you want to spend more, have a look at Glidecam. Have a look at um, maybe even Glidecam's XR series. Uh, have a look at Monocam. That's great. Uh, Laying also very nice. Uh, at the moment, the Monocam is kicking butt. Um, so so check that out. Um, I've posted uh, review and footage of that. So all right, guys. Well, I hope you, this has given you an idea of of how smooth this is to walk around with. Um, Yeah, I mean, it's sort of somewhat somewhat acceptable when you know shooting with a wide-angle lens. Uh, let me put this onto a you know. Uh, let's go with uh, well, hell, let's go with fifty millimeter uh, since it's a very common lens for people to use. Um, and then I'm going to do it. I'm going to see if I can actually aim at something and keep it aimed there. So let's say I want to aim it at the salt and move forward toward the salt. Very difficult. Uh, not a shot I could use. Let's say something else, something at eye level. So let's say that little white thing. Um, again, not a shot I could use at 50 millimeter. It's just not. I mean, I could try maybe using just one hand and being very careful and just moving backwards really slowly. So right now I'm just using one hand, I don't have the other hand on the stabilizer, but still it's just the movements from this hand are, are going into the stabilizer. As you can see my, my hand is here, but the movements from even after I've added oil to this, the movements here are going into the stabilizer, right? So, and so, so like I said, like you could see I was getting okay footage. You know, it's not the worst footage you've seen. It's 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 okay, smooth, uh, with a bit of experience, with a bit of practice. You could use this, but I'll leave that up to you. I mean, I don't really have a conclusion for this video. That's all I can say. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I'm gonna show you the um, handheld and and the shoulder rig, and let you guys make up your own minds. Now. Uh, in part one, I showed you how well this works, and then now I'm going to show you how a shoulder rig works in comparison on the same camera, still no image stabilization, and uh, I'm not going to use the camera's viewfinder because that adds stability, and some cameras don't have a viewfinder, uh, like for video like this one, a digital viewfinder. So I'm just going to use the camera's screen. I have no counterweight at the back of this rig, no... It's like just an extremely... Uh, it's kind of difficult for me to show you that, but extremely bare bones rig, just like almost nothing, just like some sticks, a connection for the camera, handles, you know, just like the most basic rig. But I wanted to show you how that compares uh, to um, to this thing. So, um, again, not using the viewfinder, it would be more stable if I use the viewfinder um, than just the screen, because this is a sort of slightly uh, awkward angle. I mean, it's not too bad, but it would be a little better with the viewfinder. Now, what you could immediately see is that it's much easier for me to actually aim this. And... I think it's more stable, you know, it's... Um, this is something I could use professionally. I can aim it where I want it. I can still walk. A little bit of shake from when I walk. And uh, don't forget, right now I'm talking. Normally when I'm operating a camera, I'm not talking, so... And this does take practice, it does take a steady hand. Um, you know, I am a good camera operator, but still, just as an example, I wanted to show you how well this works in comparison. I mean, I'll let you make up your own mind about this. Personally, for me, it, there's no question. Even the most bare bones shoulder rig like this is my choice. But like I said, you know, I'll let you. Um, you make up your mind. There's the there's the box that that um, S40 stabilizer came in. And uh, if you're wondering that what that is, that's the new X cam. I'll have a review about that soon. New stabilizer. And let's uh, let's do a shot. Uh, let's say for example, I want to move in towards that salt. Now, just like with the little um, S40 stabilizer. You can't run with this very well. It's sort of similar in the fact that you can't run with it. Uh, so you can only sort of do a slow controlled walk. 
and then you may see some shake in the footage but the difference here is that this is micro shake which could be handled uh, or helped by um, by the camera's image stabilization whereas that stabilizer the lack of stability is the fact that it's hard to control it's hard to aim and that can't be helped by the camera stabilizer so here if you turn on the stabilizer which I haven't gone on at the moment then you would be able to um, yeah I mean you, you'd be able to get much better results from this than with that and let me show you this at 50 millimeter again just uh, for comparison so here's 50 immediately you can see that it is easier for me to aim there's no image stabilization in the lens so you know we're seeing a little bit of sort of micro shakes but in comparison I think still pretty good even if I walk towards something not bad uh, I, w I would aim not to use this at such a long focal length you know I'd, I'd if I was using this uh, shoulder egg like this I would aim for sort of 35 millimeter maybe but um, or, or wider you know um, but this is okay and if I was using this properly let's say for example if I was uh, to bring this up to my eye that does help stability quite a bit one of the reasons I love the NEX6 so damn stable Okay, let's go to wide now. And now with wide and using the viewfinder, it is stable. And uh, like I said, again, very easy to control in comparison. And I can even do moves like this, you know, where I want to whip the camera around and uh, get a really controlled move. And I can even lift it up off my shoulder and use it a little hand a little bit handheld um, now like I said again uh, the stability of the like the lens is adding to the stability it's a wide lens but I'm showing you the same lens on both systems so hopefully that gives you an idea all right guys now uh, the third test is going to be handheld because uh, should give you a good idea of how they compare so uh, I'll see you in a minute Hey everyone, welcome back. So uh, this is the NEX6 with the 16-50 kit lens, no image stabilization, um, comparison compared to these two, the S40 stabilizer and the uh, shoulder rig. And um, should give you an idea, you know, uh, again, sorry that I'm doing this in my room, you know, I don't have time to go outside and, and do the a proper full, you know, review comparison, but Like I said before, I do have a steady hand, so it's not just, you know, it's not just point and shoot. You got to practice, um, got to practice technique, leg movements. It's 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 part of it's part of shooting, you know. It's but um, I'd choose this over the stabilizer. Uh, I guess. It's, I can't tell you if this is better, I can say I would choose this. Uh, it's cheaper, it's smaller, it's easier, and to me it's more stable and easier to control, so... This is what I would, you know, I'd go with this or the shoulder rig. Um, let's go to 50, show you what I can do with that. Now uh, with 50 here, getting a little bit of jitteriness, so if I put this up to my eye... does help a little bit and now a uh, 50 millimeter isn't really something to walk around with but it's still easier to aim than, than the S40 and this backwards move was uh, just handheld like this 
without the viewfinder. Okay, so this is the monocam. Uh, it's not a fair comparison. This is much more expensive. It's around three hundred dollars, but I knew you guys wouldn't forgive me if I didn't post this in the comparison. So here it is. Lovely, lovely stabilizer. One of the best on the market. And um, yeah, just because you know, there's a lot of talk about this, and yeah, I sort of. I thought it'd be not a fair thing to add, but something that you guys would want to see, you know, what it's like in comparison. And then let's go to uh, 50. Now obviously, like I said, this thing is the best performer of the bunch. And it should be, it's more expensive, but uh, let me rebalance this now that I've zoomed in. And there we go. So, um, more difficult to control at 50 millimeters, just like any other stabilizer. And this is 50 millimeter on crop, so. Uh, Around 85 millimeter full frame equivalent. Still very smooth. Like anything else, more difficult to aim when it's at 50. Okay guys, so thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and uh, I'll see you soon.